Hi. Uh, in this session, I'll be uh, talking about something uh, which is not uh, normally uh, discussed in my uh, tutorials. So today I'm going to talk about cyber safety, uh, a practical uh, guide to staying safe on the internet. Okay. So uh, first is we'll talk about uh, the practice of safe browsing. Yeah. So how do you uh, do a safe browsing? Yeah. So uh, first is let's uh, open up a Google Chrome. This is my favorite um, internet browser. So uh, for safe browsing. Uh, I would really recommend you to install a tool because when you do the browsing you don't know which particular website you will be visiting so the best is actually to uh, uh, get the assistant for this I'll be showing you the Google Chrome's um, extension called what uh, web of trust yeah so you just type web of trust you will see this one this is actually a browser extension for website reputation ratings yeah all you need to do is install i've already installed it that's why i have this removed from uh, chrome so here is the web of trust yeah all right, so reputation now for this uh, Google Chrome is 4.7, yeah, based on the uh, chrome.google.com, yeah. So the good thing is that by using this uh, what or web of trust, this is one of my, my favorite uh, tool or extension for Chrome, yeah. Yeah, you can of course install it uh, on let's say your favorite browsers like uh, Mozilla Firefox, um, uh, Opera, and others, including Safari, yeah, Apple Safari. So uh, let me sh dem uh, demonstrate to you how to actually use this one. So let's say just go to Google, and let's say I. I'm going to uh, visit a particular website. Let's say most IT people like to visit this website, or perhaps just type, let's say, KeyGen or KeyGen. Normally, uh, we, uh, as the IT people, we normally like to have, uh, you know, free software or even like a crack software. Then, uh, when you type the KeyGen, yeah. Uh, Google will show you several results. We have like fifty-two thousand four hundred. Uh, so, so all right, uh, fifty-two million four hundred thousand result, not fifty-two thousand. Yeah, and yeah, notice that in the on the right side of this, you can see this reputation. Yeah, uh, and for website for websites which has bad reputation or low reputation yeah let me just check um, let's say a crack with the key gen crack see if we can get different reputation yeah maybe we just type crack mostly green ah here we got one so for example here uh, it actually shows me that uh, the, uh, the security of this website is very bad. This is not uh, this website is not safe. It has a reputation of 1.4. You can even click to view full scorecards. Uh, this is actually based on the user's uh, report or report from the users. Okay. The category is considered as scam, misleading, or unethical and suspicious. Yeah. 
Okay, let's close this one and find another keywords, let's say, or website. Uh, this is also another one. We got 0 0.5, not safe. Or maybe like, um, let's try to get, let's say what else, uh, let's say uh, serial free serial numbers. Yeah, normally this website also gives you, yeah, or has bad reputation. Let me just minimize this. Yeah. So basically, if you found the website which has this uh, rat uh, or bad reputation, yeah, you should not actually visit the website because it might contains viruses or some other things. Yeah. Hmm, let me see where I can actually get. Let's say, uh, let's try to get this Microsoft Office product key. Yeah. So. Here, there's no reputation yet. Of course, you can actually report this. For example, if it is not good, you can go to the full scorecards and you can report as the user. Yeah, you can rate this website. For example, like okay, um, bad. Yeah, next. You can make, uh, you can put like a security concern like malware maybe phishing. Yeah, or potential unwanted programs you can just click next uh, you can also uh, choose tags to describe this let's say um, uh, suspicious or even misleading you can contain like uh, I'm not sure on this one yeah, so skip and when you search again let's just close it when you refresh you might get the correct information or maybe it was not safe yet i'm not sure yeah so anyway yeah so we got this uh, newest yeah virus try again let's say one x virus phishing potential unwanted program hmm, suspicious misleading skip uh, I need to log on, in fact, uh, and sign up to write a review. Okay, so again, if you found this kind of uh, website that has uh, the rat, uh, you know, uh, circle there, yeah, it also shows that this is not appropriate for children. Security is not safe. Reputation zero point five. Okay. All right, uh, then you can also use the tool called Netcraft. This is actually the extension. Same thing, you can actually search for, let's say, Netcraft extension. Yeah. So this is for the internet security and data mining. And you can click on this one and to see. So let's say if you go to a specific website like, uh, let's say, uh, Google and search for let's say uh, key gen crack software. So let's say you go to uh, let's change this one to so crack software. See if we can get the right uh, circle or icon there. We haven't seen any. Keep on searching. I'm sure you can find one. So anyway, uh, crack. Let's see. Um, let's see. Um, Freeze 2019, for example. Let's see if we can get something. Oh, okay we don't get anything yet so let's say you wanted to visit this website so there's no rating yet you just click on this one and 
since there's no rating yet we don't know so after you have visited this website or click the website you can just click on the netcraft extension yeah you can see the rating here risk rating is one uh, so you can even uh, you know submit yeah for example add a reason or something like that yeah, and you can even put like a report malicious link yeah so for example I can put like okay uh, my name yeah you can report for a malicious URL yeah that's it so that's how you report that uh, if this website is uh, you know, suspicious or contains something which is not good for user okay so let me minimize this then you can also uh, do the second one so the first one is uh, the practice of safe browsing yeah don't do not just go to a particular website especially if you're using uh, what which uh, allows you to see whether the website is good or bad and the second one is make sure your internet connection is secure you can even use like a VPN connection let me show you something on this so let's say I, I will go to a website called what's my ip.org and this website will actually show me my real ip this is my real ip okay and if i go to uh, ip location yeah i can put this and see my actual location which is in korea okay i'm now in daegu which is correct yeah so now let's uh, go back so remember that my ip is 119 okay so i'll be using my zoom vpn and i will make myself look like cancel this and then select i can select that uh yeah i can make myself uh, coming from as if i'm coming from tokyo so what i need to do is i just i select connect In fact, I've already discussed about the use of VPN yeah, in my other videos. Okay, so once you're connected, you can actually refresh this and see what is my IP address. See, my original IP address is 119. Yeah, 119, right? So now it's 167. Let me just copy this and go to the IP location and punch the ip and select location and notice that now my location is japan wow okay so if you uh, have like um, of uh, let's say a tool called let's say wireshark you can actually see if your connection is fully encrypted yeah uh, although you can also see that this website is also uh, secure yeah by looking at the HTTPS yeah I mean by looking at this yeah the link HTTPS yeah you can actually confirm this by let me launch my Wireshark and let me uh, try to look at my traffic so I'm running this one so let me just remind me later and then select internet so notice that we got a protocol ESP as you can see here TLS yeah and my zip is still running yeah yeah So we have TLS version 2, yeah, so let me just go to the website. What's my IP? And let me uh, stop this for a while and let us analyze. So first is we got ESP, which is actually I believe uh, this one was actually uh, set by the uh, or 
uh, generated uh, because of uh, the use of our uh, VPN okay and for the HTTPS what you can see is that it's actually running TLS let's see Yeah, here we are actually running TLS yeah, to connect to us uh, to the website. Okay, okay, right. And you can see the sync act. I can just right click and select follow TCP stream, and you can even see yeah, it's actually connected to you know, some website like DigiCert and so on. Okay, so that's how you uh, confirm whether our connection is encrypted or not and you can also see all of my connections all of my traffic i mean yeah, the, the traffic that, that i uh, i'm using is actually encrypted using esp or encapsulated security payload okay let me close this and quick without savings okay so very useful yeah the use of secure vpn connection it allows you to somehow hide your actual geographic location the ip address and so on and then the next one is be careful what you download yeah especially if you go to you know some website which you don't really uh, know or you don't really um, uh, familiar with yeah so for example here i'll be showing you uh, how to check a suspicious file that you have downloaded so i'm using i'll be using this um, virtual machine yeah running uh, windows xp so log on okay then uh, let's say i have several files here let's meet go to demo and then we have malwares and let's say we have this um, perhaps Trojan we don't know this yeah so let's say I would think that uh, I mean I have downloaded uh, these files then I would think that these two files are Trojans or even like backdoor how do you ensure that these uh, two files are not uh, backdoor or even Trojans or we just call it as malware right so what you need to do is you launch your browser and you can actually of course you can scan by using your antivirus first but if you don't have antivirus how right so what you need to do is just go to virustotal.com and slowly uh, choose the file point to your C drive yeah where you actually place your files Go to Trojans, for example. This is the name of the, the, the folder, just an example. So I'll just try to select Keygen. I'm not sure whether Keygen is a Trojan or backdoor or even contains malware. Click op, uh, open. And notice that the engine will actually uh, run. And we have about 60, uh, we have 68 uh, antiviruses or endpoint um uh, endpoint uh, software yeah which will allow you to detect malwares and viruses yeah and notice that 32 engines detected this file as trojans right it may be a false positive or false alarm for us but this would indicate something yeah some uh, of the antiviruses that runs on uh, at the back of this uh, website was not able or they were not able to detect the file okay all right so let's uh, check another file I will also uh, select the file which is actually box okay. yeah see uh, 40 engines detected this file as uh, malware Okay, so by using this, I could confirm that this is these two files are malicious. Yeah, so I 
most likely I will not keep these two files on my drive yeah because if I run these two files there is a possibility that my computer will be infected right so that's how you uh, do detection of course if you have like uh, antivirus yeah, you can just copy this for example and put it into your let's see uh, temp drive let me just open if I have temp yeah here I'll just paste this and I can easily scan with this Bitdefender yeah but my Bitdefender says that it's clean yeah so it may be maybe it was actually uh, considered as false detection yeah or false alarm all right so next is um, so if you want to download please check your downloaded files make sure that it's clean yeah you can use whatever antivirus or endpoint protection you have or you can just use the free open source uh, I would say a uh, free tool uh, which is actually the uh, virus total yeah earlier right so again this is the virus total okay, okay then um, be careful oh yeah so we have done this be careful uh, what you download we have checked the suspicious file or maybe the file itself next is i'm going to show you how to actually create strong password yeah you can also use a tool called password matter yeah or password meter okay so first is let's uh, just go to my c drive temp so I'll create new file let's say we just call it as test okay and i'll minimize this so what I'm going to do is I will try to create a password. So for example, uh, which could be this one, just an example. Let's say PA55W.RD. Uh, yeah, just an example. Or this one, pa w 0 rd or p at ssw 0 rd yeah. You can put any uh, any good password in fact so let's try this password so let's say um, you have a Google account like Gmail yeah you can have something like PA dollar dollar W zero RD underscore Gmail you can put something like underscore or hash yeah, something like that just to make it unique or Facebook for example you can also use the same thing yeah P A dollar dollar W zero R D let's say Facebook let's say uh, with the um, <clears throat> uh, other symbol yeah so you can use the hash symbol or what do you call this um, the i can't really remember anyway this is the uh, the symbol that you can actually add yeah or even like windows for example you have a, a windows logon or login let's say windows win 10 for example you can put like a password pa dollar dollar w zero rd underscore let's say win yeah, or you can put like win yeah something like that okay so let's try let me save this let's try to verify uh, with the password meter okay so this is the password meter let's copy this so for example here I'll use this password maybe we start with one first and paste 78% only okay so we got score because the minimum requirements is minimum eight characters in length contains three-fourth of the following items include uppercase letters lowercase letters numbers and symbols right 
So let's try another one. This one. So we have we put score seventy eight percent, and you can copy this and go to this one. Eighty two percent. Okay, uh, and then let's copy the third one. What score we got? 68%, which is not really good. And what about this? 100%, oh, wow, nice. 100%. How about this one? Also 100%. And how about this one? Also 100%. Yeah, which is actually good news for you. So this is how you use the uh, password meter. So the link is this one, WW password meter. So let me just put here in my notes. Yeah, so this is the password meter. So the uh, the um, purpose of the password meter here is actually to uh, test how strong is your password so you can actually look at the minimum requirements and you can see how uh, they actually uh, score your uh, password yeah we got this one like uh, letters symbols uh, and so on and so forth okay all right so uh, Another way of, of testing this is to visit a particular website, like for example, uh, hashkiller.co.uk or .co.uk. You can use this, uh, let's say, has a password and then copy, let's say, uh, this password, just an example. Yeah. And see, we can actually, yeah, let's put this one and then we do not put any salt. Salt is actually a unique variable that will allow you to, uh, in fact, um, secure your, uh, your password. So let's generate this. And so once generated, so for example, if we will just use uh, the MD5 hash, which is uh, the conversion of this password, let's just go to crackstation.net and paste this, see if we can actually find the password. and select and so we click this one and then click crack hashes you see so it says that the red one here stating that it, the, the password or the hash of the password is not found in their database so it's good okay good news for us all right so that's how you uh, choose the strong password and how to actually you know, uh, measure the strength of your password. Okay, that's number four. Number five, make online purchases for a secure website. You can use the SSL or TLS. So what you can do is, let's say, let me just close the rest. Let's say you will go to, let's say, Lazada. Uh, and then click on the lazada.com yeah how do i know that this lazada is actually secure just wait for a while now notice that here it says that connection to this website is not secure right you should not enter any sensitive info in this site yeah so let's go to different website let's say i want to book a ticket let's say traveloka and notice that Traveloka has this one, HTTPS. You can look at the view site info by clicking the padlock. And notice that there's a information about connection is secure. Right? So this one is not uh, 
what you call this recommended yeah of course maybe Lazada uh, did not put the SSL on their own uh, let's say lazada.com but maybe when you click let's say uh, I go to uh, uh, the Philippines they may have uh, protected their website yeah so here this is actually good so the front page I mean the the main page of the lazada.com does not have the uh, SSL or TLS yeah there's no HTTPS but when you click on um, Lazada dot com dot ph you can see that we have connections is secure I mean we have this uh, information and we got this uh, padlock and you can even look at the whether certificate is valid or not yeah okay so that's how we uh, verify make sure that you have this make sure that you have the HTTPS okay and make sure that you have this a padlock and show the connection is secure right of course you can actually test this by running the let's say a Wireshark as I have already shown you earlier okay now uh, the last part here is uh, the keep your antivirus up to date so in this example I'll be showing my antivirus so I am actually running this um, a bit defender total security but uh, I have disabled web attack for the meantime so I can enable this and then notice that it says that you are safe and you can look at the, my protection like I turn on my antivirus yeah and I have the firewall I have the anti-spam vulnerability uh, scan online threat prevention advanced threat defense safe files and ransomware remediation okay so I can just go to my um, dashboard and uh, let me see we can actually uh, yeah let me see let's go to the settings yes select updates yeah so I have already set to ensure that update is automatically um, uh, what you call this uh, allows the connection to the internet and download uh, whatever updates required okay so update here is one hour every one hour and also silent update so it will not disturb you and the other thing that I want to uh, show you is this one uh, I've already shown you how to use the web of trust netcraft now I want to show you the ad block so this is ad block so let's say you go to Google. Uh, let's say you go to a particular website. Let's say uh, uh, the tick.com. Click on this one. Some website has or have, uh, you know, a lot of um, uh, ads or advertisement, right? So here. I have installed the uh, ad blocker at block plus or uh, and also or uh, I have added or installed ad block this is just an example of a tool that you can actually install to uh, provide you with the ad free browsing experience okay so as you can see that my ad blocker has successfully blocked 14 in this page and total of 35,647 uh, ads yeah yeah I've already installed also the adblock plus yeah so you can in fact install both adblock plus or even like adblock okay so it's very easy to install you can just go to let's say um, Google and search for ad uh, block for let's say Chrome so this is where you can uh, install yes select and then select install so I have installed this that's why I have removed from Chrome if you, do, if you have uh, you haven't installed the um, the add-on you'll be asked to actually install on your Google Chrome as the extension right and let me see uh, so we got netcraft what okay 
how about this net uh, last pass yeah i've also uh, shown you what's my ip earlier so let's uh see last pass so i use last pass yeah so for example let's say go to uh, uh, let's say uh, google yeah I normally uh, use uh, this uh, last pass. This is my last pass, yeah. To actually store a lot of information, like for example, the most common, uh, you know, the most frequent website that uh, I have visited, or I'm, uh, I can actually put anything here. I can add. So whenever you go to a specific website that requires you to enter username and password yeah, by default, yeah. It will actually um, allow me to, uh, you know, enter my username and password without having to memorize the password. So let's say um, my Facebook, or maybe not Facebook. Let's say um, my LinkedIn. Yeah. And let me just log out from here. Okay, sign out. Yeah. And select. Yeah, so this one. So when I click the sign in, you see that everything is is there by default. Uh, it's automatically, everything is automatically, uh, I would say, uh, filled in. Yeah so you see that my username and my password is already there so i don't really have to i i would say that i don't even need to remember or memorize my password right you just click sign in it will automatically sign in if you change the password if you even change the password last pass will actually uh, remind you on whether you want to update the uh, the vault or the uh, uh, WhatsApp, uh, sorry, the LastPass um, storage or the vault, they call it a vault, which is actually stores the information about our username and password. Uh, if you select yes, then it will automatically update for you. Yeah, so very convenient. Yeah. Other than LastPass, I would also recommend something called, um, let's say, um, Dashline, Dash lane yeah dash lane it's not dash line yeah yeah or you can also use yeah this is dash lane which also has the same function uh as the uh, last pass but my favorite is last pass or you can also get uh, something called um uh, password bus yeah this is for the password manager, which also allows you uh, to store your, I mean, to securely store your username and password. Yeah. Or if you want to have a free tool, you can actually use the uh, pass, uh, keep pass, if I'm not mistaken, keep pass, yeah, which can be installed on your, yeah, key pass, not keep pass, yeah, key pass, which is a password manager or password safe yeah uh, it is uh, free and can be installed on your windows yeah uh, password boss dash lane last pass yeah key pass all of these are the examples of um password uh safe or password vault that will uh, allows you to store uh, every password uh, what do you call this uh, every sensitive information especially your username and password in their uh, safe uh, vault okay and you can of course uh, download it for free and yeah, do the testing within let's say uh, 7 to 14 days and yeah, the maximum is 30 days all right so that's about the uh, cyber safety, a practical guide to staying safe on the internet. Okay, so I 
I'm providing this to uh, allow general users to safely browse the internet yeah, and uh, secure their uh, private information. All right, hopefully uh, you can learn from this particular tutorial and I hope uh, that this tutorial will help you on staying safe when you're browsing or when you're uh, you know exploring the internet right so internet is free but of course you will need to make sure that you uh, keep your uh, privacy and make your privacy paramount or the most important okay see you again next time thank you for watching the video